You're done, son. Hey, guys. Yeah, keep going. Uh, hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, welcome back to another one of our combat broadsword videos. We've gone through a number of things so far. We've done footwork. We've done basic body position, basic defensive blade work, attacks, and we've even added the head wrap. We're starting to look a little bit like Tai Chi broadsword. Today, as I promised in the last video, we're going to talk about this other hand that's just floating out here in the ether. We're going to talk about the offhand. Now, this is a little bit of a controversial issue depending on what Tai Chi swordsman you talk to. The reason for that is because there's some people that feel like this hand is vulnerable because it's not holding a sword. We need to keep it back here in a defensive area. Okay? Now, that's an okay way to do it. But to me, that's not necessarily optimizing everything. There are correct and effective ways to use this offhand, and we're gonna talk about two different ways to go about that today. One, we're gonna talk about this hand as an assistance for the broadsword itself, then we're gonna talk about using this hand against an opponent, as you just saw with me and Matt doing a little bit of broadsword chin na here on the floor. Now, the first thing to know about the broadsword and the offhand, again, as I've said time and time again, look to the form. If you watch in the form, you see a lot of movements with the hand supporting the broadsword, a lot of movements with the hand leading the broadsword. Now, there's a couple things going on here. One, the broadsword is heavy, so we want to help move that around because speed is an advantage for a lighter weapon. Well, we want to compensate for that, and our advantage is that we have this other hand. If you know a traditional Chinese broadsword, it's only sharp on the back edge on the very top, if at all. Some broadswords aren't sharp on the back edge at all. So we've got this whole surface here that we can use a hand on to assist the movement of that broadsword, which means that if I'm defending myself back this direction and I want to turn that weapon, instead of just trying to fight that through with the arm, I can bring my other hand around to use to drive and push that weapon. It's not really to add force. I don't need to worry about pushing hard with that hand. The broadsword has enough weight, and if you're cutting correctly, it's got enough momentum to do the damage by itself. It doesn't need you to push harder. What we're doing is we're turning that blade in order to get increased momentum. We're bringing the blade around. In fact, some of these head wrap movements that you see in the form where it comes back to the waist, you can even drop a hand down and push from there. All these are ways to just help turn the sword a little bit faster, and you can use the body and the off hand for that. The other important aspect of this hand is that in Tai Chi, so much of it is about body connection. It's about using the whole body in every motion. Now, we've got a short video on cutting in the chest arch. You may want to take a, a glance at that, but that's going to be the other thing is I've got this connection through my shoulders, pectoral, shoulder girdle, and what I want to do is if I'm going to bring the sword up this way, I don't just want to swing empty with this arm. I want to draw from my waist through my whole body and power that cut all the way through. It's very awkward to try to bring this hand across and support here, but I can use that connection, that fascial tissue, to draw my shoulders through and create that stronger cut to both sides. So I don't want to leave this hand idle. One of the ideas energetically that often comes up in Tai Chi is that we bring our energy and our Chi into the broadsword. It invests the entire front edge of the blade. But as you know, if you've studied a lot of energetic practices, if energy travels one way, it has to go the other direction as well. And that's where this empty hand begins to become active. I'm going to bring that energy out into this hand to balance the broadsword so that I'm balancing and offsetting that movement. Okay? Now, that takes a lot of practice, so practice with that. And the best way to practice that, go back to your form. So if you don't know the broadsword form yet, if you've just been watching this video, go out there and find a video of the broadsword form. Study that. Find a teacher that can teach you the broadsword form and study with them. Learn the form, because that's really going to teach you these excellent connected body mechanics for how to move the sword very effectively around the body, using this offhand and the body as an advantage. Now, the other use of this offhand. It can be used offensively and defensively. The secret to this, to not getting your hand lopped off, is to be smart about when you stick your hand out there. On very rare occasions, am I going to want to think block with the hand? If I see an attack coming in, I don't necessarily want to think like, if you watched our disarm video, I'm going to step in and seize with that hand and come in with the sword. Sure, you might get away with it, but that puts your hand and wrist at a pretty great risk. Because if I miss even a little bit, or if my opponent is smart and draws short, all that happens is this blade ends up on this skin, and I'm very, very particular about my skin not being cut. Don't like to bleed, so I'm not going to do that. What I want to do is I want to secure my opponent's weapon with the blade, and then use that hand to augment my motion, to help secure that blade to protect myself, or to help put my opponent in an off-balance position. Now, there are hundreds of ways to do that, and I can't show you all of them right here, but I will show you a few just so you understand what I'm talking about. So we're going to bring Matt back out. Probably not going to throw him on the ground again. Sorry, guys. I know you were hoping, but we'll give you some ideas. Now, we're going to start with the head wraps because I talked about this a little bit last time. So if Matt cuts over here and I come in with this head wrap, 
I'm in very close. Now, I talked about moving under my arm rather than bringing the head wrap around and leaving this sword. Well, as I move in, I very naturally have this hand over here by his sword. Now, when I secure, I don't want to think about this blade. I can think about the hand even a little bit into the wrist. What I don't want to do is come all the way up here to the shoulder because you can see what I've done now is I've left his entire arm free with that blade. So if I'm going to use this offhand, I really want to use it to secure this weapon. As I come in, I'm going to close off use my wrist, forearm, and hand to make sure that now you can see if he tries to cut, he can't do that. This hand now is free to wrap around and make my own cut, and that makes it very difficult for him to defend. Same thing if he cuts from the other direction. I can roll into that head wrap. You see I can secure right here, push that hand out of the way to open him up for that cut. It makes it very difficult to defend. Now, the head wraps are the most obvious and easy place to start getting used to using that offhand, but it's certainly not the only place. For instance, if he cuts to this side and I make just a standard defensive movement, I can close the ground, block that hand, and come in with my cut. Same thing to the other side. If he cuts, I can close the ground and make that cut happen. So I can start bringing that hand in. But what you see is in each of these instances, my hand, my body, everything stays behind this wall of defense we built in our second video where I'm protected. And only once as he makes that cut, I've secured his blade. I've stopped his momentum. I know where his hand is that's when I'm going to bring this hand out and secure. That way I can keep this hand safe because unless he's super fast and really impressive, he's not going to be able to get that hand back and make any sort of effective cut against this exposed offhand, okay? So that's how we're going to use the offhand. Biggest thing to work on is the mechanical advantage because if you do that, that's going to dramatically change your broadsword fighting because it's going to take a lot of pressure off the wrists, off the forearm, and off the shoulder by bringing that motion and that pulling of the broadsword out into the whole body, and that's going to save you a lot of fatigue, make you much faster and much more effective as a broadsword fighter, especially in a longer engagement. But you can also start playing with that concept of once I've secured the blade, is there an easy way for me to get out, secure the hand, and make that cut? Because that's going to make a lot more of your cuts arrive home, because if I've got a hold of your sword hand, you're probably not going to be blocking my next cut. It's going to put you in a very awkward position. The last thing I do want to say about that is you'll notice at no point did I grab Matt. Like most of Tai Chi, I don't want to commit myself to him because if I reach out and grab his wrist, yes, I've got him, but he's also got me. He knows right where I am. If he pulls, he can draw me off balance. What I want to do is I simply want to cover that hand. That way, if he starts to move away, I can use my sticky hands training to follow if I want, or I can simply release that and move back into my defensive posture. Okay? I don't want to be drawn off balance because there's a sword floating around out there, and I really don't want it to find my pretty, pretty face. Okay? So don't grab, open hand, you can start playing with those techniques. Now, we've got some more stuff coming up, keep an eye out for it, make sure you subscribe to our channel, click like so everybody will know how much you love our videos. We'll see you guys next time, thank you so much.